Mm. Pearsall's innovations were twofold. One was, uh, as an entrepreneur, a businessman, he uh, led the way, he was the pioneer, the, the guy with the ideas and the, the organizational skills to take the technology it's a step into the future. By that I mean, uh, when he tripped on the idea of you know, ionization smoke detection, smoke detection systems were available commercially. They were very expensive. They were hardwired and it was very hard to retrofit a person's house with a hardwired system. It was very expensive. And uh, his contribution was to uh, put a team together to find a way to make the systems cheaper and more efficient and more effective. And that's what, that's what his team did. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't discover or invent the technology itself, but he put the team together that uh, took the technology to, a, to the next level of making it feasible for home smoke detectors in residential buildings that were already in existence. Uh, in, the, in the early days, when hard hardwired systems were the only option, it was very expensive to string wire through a building and put detectors in every room and all that. His, his, his concept was the battery-operated detector that could be screwed to the ceiling with two screws and was all ready to go. Easy to install, not, not visually uh, obtrusive, and uh, effective at the same time. Nice. Yeah. There were a lot of barriers in the way of this new product getting into the marketplace in a large volume sales mode. First of all, uh, Pearsall knew that he had to get laboratory approval. You know, the UL label or the factory mutual label was almost mandatory for a safety product like that to be in the marketplace. He took his product to the testing laboratories and they wouldn't test it because there was no test standard available upon which to base the tests. That was the NFPA standard. The NFPA standard, standard number 74, didn't allow for battery operated battery power as a sole source of power for a home smoke detection system. So NFPA 74 had to change to accommodate the battery, battery powered concept, the self-standing battery powered system. Furthermore, uh, sales are often driven by code requirements. Building codes, fire codes, the life safety code require detection and alarm systems in buildings, and building owners have no choice. They have to buy them and install them, and that, that stimulates the market. None of those things existed when Pearsall started out. So he, uh, you know, he, he pioneered through all that. He worked with the building code groups to get building code requirements adopted. He worked with the NFPA committee to get the NFPA standard changed. Worked with the uh, building, the testing laboratories to get the testing done, and ultimately, about nine years after he stumbled on the idea, the laboratory's approval was granted, and the standard had been changed, and his first product appeared in a Sears catalog in 1972. That was the turnaround year. This is the first model of Dwayne Pearsall's battery-operated smoke detector. This is the one that appeared in the Sears catalog. The first retail appearance was in 1972 in the Sears and Roebuck catalog. It was uh, sold for $37.88. It's battery-operated. It screws to the ceiling like this, and the batteries are in here, and uh, it just stays there and waits for a smoke to enter and starts to sound in a horn when, it, when the smoke enters the chamber. If the batteries become weak because of time, it starts to chirp to tell the homeowner to go buy some new batteries. So this was the original form and design of the smoke guard smoke detector. But this was very controversial in the early days, particularly among the fire service people, because they didn't want something that was going to just go dead on them and give families a false sense of protection. You know, and it took a lot of work to not only do the technology to make it self-monitoring, but overcome the psychological barriers in the field to a battery-operated power supply, you know, it just wasn't thought of as a good idea at the time. When I think about the impact that the smoke guard detector had that Pearsall developed uh, in the country, I think of uh, the vast number of home, homes in this country before the detector came along. You know, um, retrofitting millions of homes in this country with smoke alarm systems was unimaginable to me in my early career. I couldn't imagine it happening, that the number of homes protected would go from 4% to 94% in my lifetime. I never would have imagined that. But I think this self-standing battery-powered detector that could be attached to the ceiling with two screws and be economically affordable just was the, ma was the major impact that this had. Uh, there were already systems on the market that were hardwired and it cost a lot of money. People weren't buying them. And I think that uh, his, his, his efforts really had the biggest impact on the existing buildings in the country. 
And lives were saved, you know. The, the death rate in our country has gone down dramatically over the past 30 or 40 years. I calculated that if the death rate had stayed the same as it was in the 19, early 1970s, 60,000 more people would have died of fire in our country than actually did. The deaths were reduced about 50 percent over that period of 30 to 40 years. That's a lot of lives saved. And uh, Duane wouldn't have attributed all to the detector, neither would I. You know, a lot of things like reduced smoking rates and stuff had an impact also. But there's no question the home fire alarm had probably more impact, in my opinion, on actual fire deaths than any other new technology that's come down the pike in my lifetime.